How's it going everybody? I'm Driftwood. Welcome back to Learning Game Maker Studio 2. In this episode, we're going to look at how to make a button that increases our laser power so that our shots do more damage inside of our Space Driftwood game. We're getting close to finishing this project and starting a new one soon, but there's a few more things we need to add to it and increasing the laser damage is probably one of them. We could also increase our max HP with maybe one more button and uh, any other special requests you have in this project before we move on to a new project I will listen to, so leave the comments below if you have any ideas. So you can see here that we've got our laser power all the way up to 34 because I've been playing it a little bit. Let's repair our ship, took some damage. Boom, it doesn't let us waste them. And if we have five minerals, it'll let us increase our laser power. Boom, by two. If we don't have five, it doesn't let us. And um, yeah, same, same thing applies. If you click anywhere outside the, the button, it doesn't do anything, but if you click on the button it's it's checking it just its parameters right here just its its x and y location to make sure you're clicking in the right spot of this screen um we're back on the screen here so i've been playing for this for like five minutes or ten minutes and by this point your lasers do so much damage that you just wreck everything just smash it all up so you can see we're doing a lot of damage and ships are dying super fast and all we really have to do is shoot it like three times and, it, and everything dies so let's go back to this menu here. Boom, you can see that. Boom. We're increasing it by two right there. So all I really did is it inside of Photoshop, I created a 128 by 128 uh, file and created some layers and uh, um, you know made a background image and then made some draw text on it and then and then right clicked and added like some uh, some stroke so that it has like a black outline on this and then let the player know what it's going to do and what it's going to cost and that's basically it. You could also do it right inside the engine here. Um, let's exit out of the game and jump into the engine. You could also make these sprites right inside of uh, Game Maker Studio 2 um, just by right clicking and creating a new sprite and using the editor. Um, I like Photoshop for, for like little uh, buttons and stuff but you don't actually need it. You could use a uh, Paint.net, GIMP, you know, whatever you like. The, the built-in one is good if you want to animate stuff. Uh, this didn't need to be animated. So, okay, let's get started. How do we actually add this new button? Well, like I said, you create a sprite. <clears throat> and you can see I have the sprite right here. Come on, scroll button. Um, I've made a new subcategory inside of here, uh, inside of the, the sprites, and called it U, uh, UI buttons. And uh, I've created a new sprite called it Increase Laser Damage. Uh, SPR underscore increase laser, laser damage and I've just imported the, the PNG file come on come on oh, okay it's not gonna open because it's not the object um, but once you've got the sprite you're gonna create a new object let's see if I go to open properties there that'll work um, <clears throat> right here you're going to click on import and add the button to keep the 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 where it's uh, drawing it from to the top left that way it, it, you're checking here and then drawing from X to Y there. It makes it easier when you're re referencing the code later. And you can scale this up or scale this down. Uh, it's up to you what you want to, what size of button you want to use. Since we're using 1280 by 720, 128 is a nice big button. It's easy to click. So I went with that. Once you've got your sprite, you're going to add a new object. Um, and I've got it right here under UI buttons. The same thing as the OBJ underscore repair bot. We'll open properties on that. So this one is, is doing something very similar. To the previous one we looked at is uh, the obj uh, underscore repair bot one. It's checking to see if we're pressing in the right spot. So we'll go over that code real quick in case you missed it. So we're just adding um, this sprite as uh, the the sprite image for this object. We're adding a step and a draw uh, event. So on the step event, we're checking if we're pressing the left mouse button. I can scroll in a little bit here for you. There it goes. So if we're pressing um, the left mouse button or the right mouse button that's the first condition then it's saying do this so if we're pressing left or right and our mouse underscore X is greater than or equal to X um, and our mouse underscore X is less than equal to X plus 128 this number will be different depending on the size of the the button that you're using since I'm using a 128 by 128 that's why I'm putting it right here because our X value is 128 so this is saying if our mouse is within that location where the buttons at then uh, then go to the next 
the next condition. So we're going to do the same thing for y. So we're going to say if our mouse y, which is just the location of where the mouse is at on the screen, is greater than or equal to y, and the mouse underscore y is less than or equal to the y plus its maximum y value, which is 128 by 128 is so 128. So now we're saying if we're pressing a button and our mouse is over the button's location, x and y location, then do this. Now we need to do another conditional because um, we need to see if we have at least the requirement, right? I'm requiring five minerals for this to work. Um, you can set it to however many many uh, gold coins or minerals that you want. So I'm referencing a variable that's inside of another object. And when you're referencing a variable that's inside of another object, somebody asked me this in another uh uh, in a different video, but basically all you have to do to reference the values of another uh, variable inside of an object is include that object's name before the variable you're referencing. So since I'm storing minerals value on the obj underscore status, I'm going to say obj underscore status dot minerals uh, greater than or equal to five or whatever you want. <clears throat> Arbitrary number up to you. So we're pressing left or, right, uh, left or right mouse button, and it's in the right location where the button's at, and we have the minerals required <clears throat> as stated by the, the button. Then what we're going to do is subtract a value from that. So we're going to change a value since we're no longer uh, doing a comparison. Uh, we're doing an assignment uh, operation or a subtraction here. Uh, so we're going to say obj underscore status dot minerals minus equals whatever that you're checking for. So we're going to say, do you have at least five? If you do, all right, subtract five. <clears throat> then we're gonna say, well, what do you want to happen? Well, what we wanna do is change this power of our laser, right, for this button. So we're storing that uh, variable on the same thing, our uh, object underscore status. So our object underscore status dot laser power plus equals two. And that's basically it. So if you have, you're clicking the button you're, and you have the minerals, take away the minerals and change the power. Also, you can uh, alter. You could uh, optionally add sound effects and uh, animations to play when you click the button to make it look more interactive. So we're creating a, a, a dust uh, animation when we click it, when it goes through, and we're playing a sound effect when it goes through. But then on the other, uh, we're gonna do an else handler right here. So if we're clicking on the button, because look where the else handler's at, but we don't have um, five minerals. So it's not meeting, like it meets all these other conditions. We're clicking on the button in that location, but we don't have the minerals. We're gonna play a different sound effect, like a cancel or uh, some sound effect to still show interactivity, but not uh, like, more of like the cancel sound, like doom, 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 doom. So it doesn't, you, you can feel like the player, like, okay, it's registering your click, but it's not actually going through. So that's it for the, uh, the step. Let's look at the draw. <clears throat> As with any draw uh, object, whenever you, um, you use the whenever you're calling for the draw event over here. Oops, I middle mouse click. Remember, you can do that to access the help file at any time. Um, whenever you're you're including the draw event, you have to draw self. Otherwise, it won't draw this sprite to this object. Uh, because when you don't include it, it automatically runs this code draw self to draw that. So anytime you do the draw, you're going to most likely have to do draw self. So then we're going to set the color to whatever color we want. Our laser's red, so I just picked C underscore red. We're going to uh, draw set font to um, whatever font you created. Remember, you'll just reference the name of the font that you're looking for right here. And if you want to change the font size, you could just change it right here or create a copy of the you know, simple stuff. Uh, then we're going to draw text. Now here's something, uh, a way you can extend the draw text without actually using draw text underscore uh, ext. You can just do draw text, but you can add extra strings to it if you want to. So we're going to draw text. Well, where do we want to draw it? So when we reference x or y, it's always local values. It's always the value of this object. So we're going to say we're going to draw text at this location's x, and then we're going to look for a y location. This location's Y plus 148. Why are we doing 148? Well, this is 128 uh, by 128. So we're going to say X0, zero, zero, X, Y, zero is in the top left corner. And if you want to draw at 128, 128, it's the bottom right. But what if, what, what if you want to draw like underneath it? Well, X is still going to be zero. So we're going to draw it right at X. And then we're going to draw it um, at Y plus 128 would, would start drawing it right on top of it at the bottom. But we want to put a little bit of padding. Maybe 148 is too much. We'll drop that down. Let's just try 132 to see how that looks. So it's going to be underneath it at 128. Actually, let's do 138. So we'll give it like a, or 140. We'll give it a 12 pixel 
of a space between the button and uh, where it starts to draw because the, you have to take into consideration the size of your font. The bigger the font, the more padding you're going to need. So I'm just adding 128 plus a little amount of padding on the Y. Then we're going to put in double quotes. We're going to say, what do you want this to draw? What text do you want to draw? We want to say, we want to show the laser power, right? So we're going to say laser power and we're going to put a semicolon or a colon and a space. And then we're going to do the double quotes. But then we can't just put in a number, right? Because that's this is going to be a variable that changes. So we need to add an extra bit of, uh, of code at the end. So we're going to put a plus. That means attach this value to this value. So we want to draw um, the lasers, the obj underscore status dot laser power that we're manipulating. Um, so we know how hard our laser hits right inside that uh, station. <clears throat> but we can't just draw this because it's a it's a it's not a string value. When you draw text, it's looking for string values. So you can turn any kind of a variable into a string value m most of the time by just by g going string uh, using this little bit of code. You can middle mouse click it if you want more information on it. It's very simple. You do string and then you open up some uh, some parentheses uh, and then you type in the variable you want to turn into a string. So we want to take this variable obj underscore status dot laser power and turn it into a string and attach it to the end of this so it's going to say laser power colon space and then that variable number which will be changing as we click on the level up our laser button and that's pretty much it so that's uh yeah that's pretty much it in a nutshell, nutshell. all i really did to speed this up was i increased the drop the drop rate on uh the loot and i gave the the laser power plus two instead of plus one so if i was making this in the final version i would make this plus one on the laser power and i would and i would drop the lower the drop rate of the minerals on the ships right here on the when it's uh on the step phase when our hp is less than this random throw a random number between zero to 100 if it's greater than or equal to i think i had this 49 or 50 and then, so I made it a lower number, which means it's going to drop loot more often. And I did the same thing with the cruiser. I think this was 25 and I made it 15. So I made it drop loot faster so that when I do the test, it I get loot faster and I double my laser strength real quick. So that's pretty much it. Oh, no, we have to do one more thing, right? Uh, we need to go to our menu, right? And we need to take this object we just created and drag it and drop it onto the menu. And you can put it wherever you want, and it's like very graphical. If I put it over here, it's gonna, it's, I'll show you. I can put it all the way uh, over here if I want, and we'll take a look at that. And it'll draw right there, and then the X, it'll say laser underneath it, because it's, it's taking this X location and that Y location. So we go right here, you can see it's moving it all the way down there. So you can put this anywhere you want. Uh, uh, one more thing that I wanted to talk about is you don't always have to like what if you can't line it up and you just like oh, I just I can't like make it look right by drag it, dragging and dropping it you can actually use code to determine where it stays at so we can use like a uh, code to set its X and Y value so let's jump into this object real quick a little bit of bonus content on the create we can add a create step so we'll put this at the front so we can say X equals um, room underscore width room width divided by uh, three or two whatever we can put it right in the dead center y equals room height divided by two so this will put it in the dead center it'll probably um, actually uh, that's where the pause is so let's add a little bit to the y and that way it uh, plus 200 so it'll bring it underneath the pause thingy so by manipulating its X and Y on the create, you can change where it appears. So let's like, okay, look, I'm going to put it in the top right, but it's going to draw it somewhere right here because we're putting its X and Y location in the code. Well, at least it should. Let's test it out, see if it actually works right. So it should, it should take this and put it like right here when it draws it for the first time. Boom, boom. Let's go in here. Okay, plus 200 brought it down quite a bit, but you can see... Let's pause the music. So this was where we put it over here, but it's drawing it X uh, room height room width divided by two by, by two and then it's adding 200 to the y so it's putting it down here so you can actually use this these codes to manipulate where it actually looks at uh, where, where it's actually drawing it from i kind of like it where it was where i had it so i'm gonna take that off but i wanted to uh show you that you could use room width and room, room height or just set it to an arbitrary number a value whatever you value you want we actually don't need this event now so let's cut that event cool and that's pretty much it. That's going to do it for this tutorial. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed these Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials, please give this video a thumbs up. Um, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and um, let me know if you have any special requests in the comments. I will get to them, and uh, uh, I, I actually need some more ideas for this project because uh, I'm not sure what else to do with it. We've pretty much covered uh, everything I wanted to do with this this project. Um, so if you have any ideas of what you would like to see in like the space shooter, or maybe you're working on a game and you're trying to figure out something, um, let me know what you want to see. Uh, and then I can kind of figure out how to do it. I also have some homework for you. A little bug that I encountered that uh, I just noticed it before I started recording. Um, I haven't tried to troubleshoot it yet, but um, I'm actually not sure what's causing it. So I can give you guys some homework and uh, maybe you can figure it out and then um, let me know how you figured it out. or um, And I'll give you credit for it. And if you want to send me any projects to play that you're working on, we're taking a lot of damage. So... Let's increase our life. It won't let us waste it. Let's increase our laser power once, twice. Won't let us waste our points. Exit the station. Okay, so we should be hitting for 14 now. Yes, and it's working perfectly. Doing more damage. That's cool. So, okay, the bug. The bug is our pause menu works fine. But when we leave, when we go, enter the station and come out of the station, our pause menu breaks. And now it's still technically works it it pauses the game but before it used to draw a rectangle and say pause but once we enter the station and enter this scene it messes up our pause let me illustrate what I'm talking about real quick so this is a, a homework if you want it <laughs> um, if we pause it you can see it's drawing a, a like a, a black rectangle and it's making its alpha kind of transparent and it's showing pause and it still keeps our GUI up and we hit escape and it pauses fine. But once we enter the station and exit the station, our pause menu kind of breaks. So maybe you could figure that out if you follow the tutorial series and you're replicating it. Um, that's a good little thing. Okay, this video has gone on long enough. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys who are interested in Game Maker Studio 2. Um, remember, you can hop on the Discord. A link's in the description below if you want to come hang out with us. We've got a special channel just for Game Maker Studio 2 stuff. Um, but it's we've got plenty of channels if you're into all kinds of stuff. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Um, I have, um, I don't know how many now, like 20 or something, Game Maker Studio 2 tutorial. No, I think less than that. But anyway, I'll, I'm going to be making a lot more Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials at least once a week. Um, and if you're interested in RPG Maker, I have hundreds of tutorials. Um, so yeah, there's that. I also do first impression videos. If you made a game, um, I'll play any RPG Maker MV game and I'll play games from any other engine, so, but not VX Ace or XP. And older RPG Maker games, there's too many of them and I get too many requests for them. And I have plenty of MV games to play. So let me know, uh, play test your game and send me a, 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 Google, a, a Google Drive link and I will download it and um, give you credit and um, show it to the world and advertise your, your game for you. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.